Okay, so you can imagine you're a freelancer or an entrepreneur running some sort of service-based business and you want to set up an on-demand aspect for that business. Now, in this use case, we're going to pretend that we are graphic designers and we've set up a design on-demand app which allows clients to submit requests. We can accept them and deliver the results all through the platform. But you could use this if you were a website designer, you were a service-based business, if you were a video editor, anything. So I want you to use your imagination as you're watching us go through this entire run through. So what we want to do is we want to pretend we are two people. We want to pretend we are the client that's just signing up and we want to pretend we are the admin who's servicing that client. So let's open up this page, the design on demand app that we've just created. And we can just go to the home page of this app. And so let's imagine that a client has come to us and they say, look, we want to, we, we want to work with you, but we're not really sure yet. And then you offer them a free trial to see what they think of the platform of your services. So you've got their email, they've just subscribed and you want to invite them to the platform. So we can do that here, billing at lowcode.com. So you can just put in their email and then you select what plan you want to enroll them on. So in this case, it's gonna be the free trial. Now, when I click the submit button, it's gonna do a number of things. It's gonna send them an email inviting them to the platform and it's gonna add them as a user in our users table. And this is important because only users we add to the table can get one-time passwords to log into the app. So you can see here, the email's already come through. You're invited. Hey there, thanks for subscribing. Click here to log in and set up your account. So we're gonna copy this link address and we're gonna pretend now that they're on the other end somewhere, anywhere around the world. And they've clicked that link and they're gonna log in. So they put in their email, billing at lowcode.com. Now I just wanna show you that if they're coming from a different domain or a different email, it won't let them sign up because we haven't put them in that users table. So that's a nice little security feature. But we can log in and that's gonna send them a one-time password. So we head back to the email that's already come through and you can see this app is it's pretty snappy and we've built it in just a few hours. So this is a new user and both of those onboarding checkboxes have not been ticked yet which means they need to fill out their information before they get access to the rest of the app. So let's do that. Let's call this person Natalia Niceface and we wanna upload her profile photo. Let's just say that that's her. And while that's uploading, what we're gonna, what's gonna happen is when we click the next step, it's gonna mark that first onboarding step as complete and it's gonna show us the information for our business that we need to fill in. So then we can put in here the name of the business and this can just be Pastel Princess as an example. Their logo is pretty basic. It's just a bunch of pastel orbs floating around. Uh, we can put in their website. So this is all pretty straightforward. The brand summary, let's just use a bit of lorem ipsum or something and we can you know, pretend that they've given us a really in-depth explanation of the brand and the identity and everything like that. And then they can upload a document that is a brand guidelines document. So this can be all the specifications for their colors, their fonts, the spacing, the whatever. A lot of brands have this. If they don't, it's not required, so they don't actually need to. But once that is uploaded, and we click the submit button, it's gonna mark the second stage of onboarding complete and give them access to the app. Not only that, it's gonna give us a notification. So let me get my phone and let me clear out these notifications. And when I click submit, it's gonna tell me, so long as everything is working, that a new user, you, if I could speak, a new user has enrolled in the platform. So let's wait for this to come through. We can check pushover, user invited. Yep, good to go. So now what we wanna do is pretend that we are the client submitting a request for the first time. Now you can see here, actually there's one change 
I want to make very, very quickly. And that is on the dashboard, when they are new, we only want to show this button when the requests left doesn't equal zero. So if they have no requests left, we want to hide the new request button. So we'll jump back to the app and we'll allow her to place a request. So let's just say that we want a pastel YouTube thumbnail. And we can remove that. And then they're prompted to add a description for the project. So in this case, she's just got a, a video that's gone viral. She wants to step up her YouTube thumbnail game and she wants us to use two images that she's attaching below to create the thumbnail. Does this design require text? So do you want text on the design itself? And in this case, she's saying yes. So we're going to copy and paste the text that she wants. So that's what she wants on the design. She's going to choose a design type. Now, in this case, it's going to be a YouTube thumbnail. But if she selected other, she'd be prompted to add in the other type. But in this case, let's select YouTube thumbnail. It's landscape, obviously. It's not a, uh, a short or anything like that. And the format she wants it in is JPEG. So now what we want to do is upload those assets she was talking about in her description. And so we can say that asset one is the pastel image, even though I've named it wrong as, past, as asset two. And asset two can be asset one. And this is uh, this could be examples of a design they want. This could be actual assets that they want us to use in the design. And you can imagine if you were, you know, a service-based business or, or a web developer or whatever, you can specify and get all the information you need through this form and you cut out a lot of that back and forth. You know, how many pages do you need? Do you want me to do SEO? Do you want copywriting included? That sort of thing. So you can customize this app to whatever you want. But in this case, we're just going to click submit. And what this is going to do is send us as the admin a notification. Now, if I refresh, it should hide that. Um, it should actually hide that button. Yeah. So that's that little change that we made just before. So since they have no requests left because they're on a free trial, they only get one request per month. So that button is now hidden and they've been prompted to actually upgrade their plan. And you can see here, this is their request. It's queued, you can see the name of it. And since it's still queued, since we haven't accepted it yet, they can come in and edit it if they want. And they can submit that edit. Now, in the meantime, we've been notified that Natalia has submitted a new request. And Natalia has also just edited her request. So as an admin, you get notifications um, whenever people are doing things that you need to take action on. And you can see here, we'll just show that she has no requests left so that she can't actually submit any new requests. So let's jump on the other side now and let's pretend that we are the admin or the administrator of this app. And we go to the request tab and we can see we have a new request here. So we can jump into that request. We can read through and see if it's reasonable and um, look at the different images. This one's still loading. And if we think it's fair enough and it's within you know our ability, we approve that request. It does a number of things. That sets the status or the stage of the, the request or the project as in progress. And it also sends her an email letting her know, hi Natalia, we've started work on your request. So this is also cutting out all the back and forth communication that you would normally have to do to keep them informed and request feedback and all of that. So if it should be getting your brain ticking now, seeing how much you can automate your entire operation by building this kind of operating system for a freelancer. So we jump into this. Um, we can see that it's now in progress. And let's say that we've let her know that we've started work on it. We're working away and we've actually completed the first draft. So what we do here is we upload the draft. And once we upload the draft, a button is going to appear and it's going to allow us to request feedback on that draft. So once this uploads, the button will appear like magic. 
and we can click this and it's going to send her an email saying, Hey Natalia, we've done your first draft. We need some feedback. So let's check out that email. And of course it's set the status as needs feedback. There we are. Feedback request. Hi Natalia. This is the first, the first draft of your design is complete. Here's a little preview. Click the link below to leave your feedback within the next three days. So you can specify how quickly you want feedback. But in this case, let's pretend that she's really, really quick. You can see here it's already updated the status to needs feedback. But let's say she clicks that link. What it's going to do is going to automatically bring her into the app, um, you know, make the slide out thing come out and then prompt her to leave feedback on the draft. So she can click this to view the full size version. And then she can say, well, I'm actually really happy with that, but I do have a little bit of feedback. And the feedback that she's going to leave is something like this. She's going to say, this is amazing, but I've changed my mind about the emoji. Can you use the one I've attached below? And can you change the text to how to get 2 million views really quickly? So we're going to upload that asset that she's added here. And you can add more uh, image fields if you want. In this case, I've just put one. And this is just to illustrate the concept as a whole. So she's uploaded that image and she's clicked submit feedback. Now this has automatically changed the status of the project to finalizing. Not only that, it has sent me a notification on my phone saying Natalia has left some feedback. She's happy, but there is a little bit of feedback. So that's perfect. You want feedback? We can jump in. We can see the feedback here. We can take that on board. We can see the asset that she's uploaded and then we can work on it and you know, a week, a day, an hour later, we can upload the final version of the design that she requested. And what's going to happen now is that this is going to make a, a button magically appear. And we're going to be able to mark this project as complete. And again, it's going to inform them automatically. So when we mark as complete, it puts the stage of the project as complete. And it also sends her an email saying design complete. Hi Natalia, your design is complete. You can click the image below for the full version. I'll just copy the link address. Please click the link below to leave some feedback. So on her end, she's got this email. She's absolutely stoked that her design is done. She clicks the link. She can see the full version of the, the design. She's really happy with it. And we can say, I'm really happy, happy with it. She submits the feedback. It's marked as complete already. And we get a notification saying she's left the feedback. So you can see like this, this, if you continue to tweak this and modify it to your own business and the, the way you operate, you can automate your entire operation. You can get freelancers to come in and do the work for you. You can get notified when they complete jobs. You can get sent the feedback. You can do almost anything. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can see here that she's used up all the requests so she can upgrade. On this page, she'll be able to see the, um, you know, the final results from all of the different um, projects that she's requested. And here you can see the you know, the brand summary, the brand guidelines and that sort of thing. So that's it. That's just a brief glimpse at what you can build with an application like this. This is incredibly powerful. I hope you can see that this thing has the capability. Once you learn how to build in Glide, you can build some really, really impressive apps. So I hope that was useful for you and I hope you can start imagining the possibilities behind giving yourself the ability to build apps like this. You know, we built this in a few hours and it's so, so powerful. So that's enough rambling. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video or you found it useful, then I highly suggest you subscribe and hit the bell icon because I have a ton of low code videos and tutorials in the pipeline for you. And if you like the idea of becoming a low code developer who can create anything their mind can imagine without code, head to lowcode.com and sign up for one of our online boot camps. See you next time.